Hey guys, it's Banged Pipsqueak Reads, and I'm here with another review. Uh, I just finished the, uh, this weekend, I finished this short story collection called Anoka by Shane Hawk. And it's a, it's a short read. It had, um, I think, five stories in it. And it's, uh, it's an indigenous horror, something that I have never read before, so I was really excited to dig in and uh, this one's um, I mentioned in an earlier video that I got like signed uh, so he <laughs> wrote it on post-it notes one with a writing motivation and then with this little doodle here that he decided to put on <laughs> I thought it was really br brilliant so um, yeah so these are like it, this is indigenous horror um, mostly going through uh, like um, like um, I think through the tribes from Lakota and um, can't, I, I can't really pronounce that um, Sio? Sio? I, I feel so bad Shane if you're watching this I feel so bad, bad for not being able to pronounce that word I mean it's, it's the same when, when I wouldn't feel bad if you couldn't you know, pronounce any of my Icelandic words, but yeah. So uh, uh, Shane mentioned in the books he all he wrote both like um, like an author's note, uh, the story notes, and also an introduction. So in the, in in the introduction, he is explaining uh, why he decided to base the stories around this little town called uh, or city called Anoka. It's a small Minnesota city near Minneapolis and St. Paul. And um, the name Anoka originated from the Dakota word Anoka Tahan, which means on both sides of the river, which was something I didn't know. So it was interesting. Um, and he decided to base it on because it is known to be, uh, what was it? The Halloween capital of the world. So kind of like had this kind of spook factor to it so and it was kind of a fitting place um, to you know base these indigenous horror stories on but it is of course around um, some like Native Americans um, stories because Shane is of course is um, a Native American and um, so what did I like? So, like I said, these are um, short stories, uh, and only I think about five of them are in there, I think. Let me see, just so I can get that right. Um, okay, there are six stories, uh, but there is one a story that is like super, like one or two stories that are like flash fiction, while the rest are more typically categorized into short stories. Um, they, um, the stories are called Soil Born, Wounded, Orange, Imitate, Dead America, and Transfigured. Uh, the stories that I liked the best, uh, like the were my favorites, was Soil Born. Uh, it was, it was like a flash fiction type, and it kind of felt like, like an eco-horror mixed in with pagan witchcraft, in my opinion like or like Native American witchcraft um, in which like there's these two couple that are trying to have a baby can't really have a baby and um, so they resort to kind of a witchcraft and like basically creating a baby from a tree or from a soil and they're trying to make like the perfect little baby uh, can't really do that. They seem to fail every single time, uh, and whenever, and whenever that fails, they just bury it back into the ground. So it was short, but it was heartbreaking. Um, but it was like effective. So I, I really, I really enjoyed this little punch in the end, like just giving that sigh and like, okay, back to square one again. And then just pick up the thing that they had created and like back into the soil. Um, 
but my favorite one was um, imitate so it was kind of like this had this um, doppelganger kind of effect which i really love i love these kind of stories like we, you can't really decipher which one is the correct person and it de deals with the um this uh, one of this man i think it was from i think it was lakota uh, one was from the like a lakota tribe um he like he's battling his own demons like he's trying to quit the uh, quit drinking and he made a mistake and he accidentally cheated uh, on his wife and he's trying to make amends and then suddenly uh, he starts seeing like there's something different about his son like he's not who he used to be and the uh, and just it, it kind of like escalates from there like he starts to see like this really weird stuff going on around him and um, he starts to think that you know that that thing is not my son and he starts to take action regarding that so the ending was really good there it was bleak um it was kind of like yeah i kind of i kind of i had a feeling this might happen because you know what whenever you whenever you read like a doppelganger story it usually the doppelganger wins uh, but it was good. I really liked how it also mm, kind of mixed in with cosmic horror a little bit. Like the, the descriptions that Shane used was like in line with cosmic horror. Not that I'm an expert on cosmic horror, but this, I just kind of had this kind of feeling when I was reading it. Um, so yeah, these were my favorite ones. I, um, Dead America was one that came well, wasn't like in third place, and um, then, then wounded, and then transfigured, and lastly orange. I think the reason with orange is um, it was also like a flash fiction, a flash fiction piece. I wasn't really sure where the story was going. It kind of felt like all over the place for me, so I couldn't really know like how I can connect the dots from it. Uh, but it, I mean. If people like these kind of like that kind of story i mean i think some people will like it but for me it didn't really didn't really do it for me um so um i'm not gonna talk about all the stories i'll just briefly just tell a little bit um like wounded um was about uh basically about grief um uh, this guy philip he was mourning the death of his sister and then suddenly he finds a book at his, uh, at his grandfather's shed and this book is kind of ominous and um, it's kind of like revealing secrets that he had been withholding himself and kind of brings out the the, the perpetrator uh, behind his sister's murder and basically it just revolves around drinking in, in essence basically like he started drinking at a, at a young age kept drinking and then at the end of the book he just continued doing that which is really sad um with um with uh, dead america dead, Amer dead america was about um like a novelist who uh, like a native american no novelist who is plagued by these nightmares there is like this huge spider lady uh, that keeps you know spinning him into his web and laying eggs into him and always saying do you deserve what you've done you deserve from what you've done you deserve this and he has no idea why and um, then he gets like a visit from his dead grandfather and he kind of explains why this spider lady has been entering his dreams. Um, it was a good one. It, I really liked uh, the imagery that he used there, especially the scenes with the spiders. I, I, I am generally not fond of bugs, and especially when they are creeping and crawling all over you. It's just, oof, I don't like that. So I really, I really appreciate the imagery that Shane uh, brought forth with that. Uh, in that story 
Um, the last one was Transfigured, and that was kind of like a classic werewolf story. Uh, the protagonist is a, is a werewolf, and you can kind of go you go through along with her, like th when she's shifting, when she's transforming into a werewolf. But it kind of, but it kind of takes away from her being the center of the story to what happens in Anoka. So during it happens during Halloween, and suddenly uh, there's this kind of like swirls in the sky, and the children are looking up at the and and then suddenly. They just go ballistic, batshit crazy, and just start killing everyone. And she just is kind of like a an observant regarding that. They she, they don't attack her, but she's like, oh, okay, this is in, this is interesting. And then she finds the person who is responsible for it. I think it was. Um, I think the ending was a little bit open, uh, like an ambig um, ambiguous in my opinion, because well, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Maybe it felt more meaning for those who are more how to say well not as knowledgeable regarding indigenous horror in which i'm not so might have been something like that so i enjoyed i enjoyed i enjoyed this book but there was one thing that kind of bothered me in which that he said in uh, shane said in the author's note that he wanted to base this in anoka but i didn't really get the feeling that you know, Anoka was an important part in most of these stories. I think the only place where it like really took place in was the last story in Transfigured. Um, and I, I was kind of disappointed in that because, you know, if you're basing, if you, I, I'm, and, but it's not like I'm really expecting people to go to such lengths like Stephen King. I mean, he bases like most of his stories around Derry, Maine or other places around Maine because he's from there. Uh, but it was interesting because he decided to base this in a place that he, he's not, he's not, uh, Shane is not from around uh, Anoka. So it was interesting to do that. And I know he probably went through a lot of research into, into this town or into this city. Um, but I, I don't know, I felt a little bit let down that it didn't really take as much place or like it didn't have as much of a setting in the stories as I would have liked, except, except for in the, in the last story. So uh, there was this just brief mentioned, but if it, if, if it had been like peppered a little bit with more, I don't know, more information about the place, um, instead of getting, you know, uh, just a brief introduction like and and just description in the, in the beginning about what anoka is so i think it would have been interesting and more um pleasant to have them this kind of have that information kind of peppered around in the stories you know just a couple of sentences it doesn't have to be like a essay or anything like that so that was the only thing uh, that was kind of disappointing to me in regards to this uh, sh short story collection but i I had never, like I said, I had never written, uh, written. I never read any uh, indigenous horror, so this was my first introduction to that, and I really liked it. Um, and I really enjoyed this little story, um, story notes afterwards, because there were a couple of things that, of course, I didn't know about. Uh, for example, the the Spider Woman is a popular legend in Ojibwe uh, tribes, which I didn't know. Um, and then, you know, and it was also kind of heartbreaking also just to see that, you know, with the Native Americans, how they're always struggling with um, alcoholism. And, um, and it's just horrible that, and that this things keeps happening to them. And I, I, while I didn't, while it kind of, you know, broke my heart reading it, I appreciate that, you know, Shane is shedding light into this because I like I think a lot of people would probably just sweep it under the rug but I I, I appreciate his um, you know his honesty and his bravery for putting that into his stories even though it was just like man I wish you would get help <laughs> every time I was reading it I was like man this sucks oh why is nobody helping them which you know it 
It's a daily occurrence, apparently, which sucks. But anyway, uh, like I said, I, I enjoyed most of the stories. Uh, but I, uh, I would give this one like three out of five stars. Uh, so if you enjoy like indigenous horror uh, and you want to support like uh, indie authors like Shane Hawk, I would definitely recommend getting this his debut short story collection. I'm definitely going to see more of him in the future because he's got good writing and I, I'm, I'm always here to support my fellow indie, indie writers so definitely gonna read more after uh, in the future. So uh, this has been my review of um, Anoka and I hope you enjoyed. Um, please uh, subscribe, like and comment if you enjoy my content. Uh, if you have any you know suggestions for further reading by all means like tell me in the comments uh but if not i'm just gonna hope i hope you guys will have a great day and i'll see you next time bye